Welcome to our lecture online. In this example, we're going to try to find the area between two curves, two curves defined by polar functions. The polar functions are r1 equals 1 half and r2 equals the cosine of theta. They're both circles. The cosine of theta function is a little bit offset from the origin right here. And notice we're trying to find the area between the two. Now that could be either this area right here or this area right here. But the way it's described here, or I guess it could also be this area right here, depending upon how you want to interpret that. But they also tell us that they want us to find it outside of R1. So outside of R1, then only can be this area right in here. Now what we need to do is we need to set up a small area element, which is going to be a triangular piece right here. And we're going to integrate that over the distance. And of course, in this case, we want to integrate it between two angles, two angles defined by where these two meet, where these two functions meet. So the angle at the top could be found by drawing a line like this, and the angle at the bottom can be found by drawing an angle like this. We also need to be careful that the area element here doesn't cross over between, two between a different set of lines. For example, if we went past the angle, notice that a small area element would only cut across this curve right here and not the other function. And so that way you would not be able to integrate past those two points. But you can see that between the two points, you have the distance from there to there, and then from there to there only goes through the function here defined by R1. And that allows us to go ahead and integrate that. We don't have to do multiple integral, integrals that way. We also know that the general formula for the area is equal to the integral of 1 half times r squared d theta. And in this case, of course, we're going to have to find the whole area of this triangle and subtract this area from it. So the whole area would be defined by r2, and this area right here would be defined by r1, which means that our integral from theta 1 to theta 2, we still have to define those. We're going to take the area is going to be equal to 1 half times, and we take the area of the whole triangle, which would be defined by R2, and we have to square that and subtract from that the area that's only defined by this, which is defined by R1, that would be R sub 1 squared times d theta. So that's what our function is going to look like. Now we need to find the limits of integration, and since there's perfect symmetry between the top half and the bottom half, we could integrate it from theta equals zero to theta equals whatever the angle is defined by this point. So we can then double that area to get the total area. So we're going to multiply this times two, and then call the bottom angle equal to zero. And finally, we need to find out what that angle is, theta, theta two, and to do that, we're going to set R1 equal to R2 and solve for that angle. So in other words, we have uh, 1 half is equal to the cosine of theta, which means theta is equal to the inverse cosine of 1 half. And that happens, of course, when the angle is 60 degrees, which is equal to, uh, let's see, pi over 3. Okay, so we found the point of intersection defined by the angle theta equals pi over 3. That means the upper limit is going to be pi divided by 3. And now we can go ahead and find that integral. So area will be equal to 2 times 1 half, which is 1, times the integral from 0 to pi divided by 3 of r sub 2 squared, and r sub 2 is the cosine of theta, so that would be the cosine square of theta minus r sub 1 squared, 1 half squared would be 1 fourth, and that whole thing times d theta. All right, to integrate the cosine square of theta, well, you want to find the equivalent of that, so we can rewrite it as follows. So area is equal to the integral from zero to pi divided by three. The cosine square can be written as one half times one plus the cosine of two theta. And then we still, have, of course, have the minus one quarter and the whole thing times d theta. Yep, that should be a theta like that. Okay. Now, it looks like we should be able to separate that into a couple of different integrals. So here we have 1 half minus a quarter, what well, gives us a quarter. So we have the area is equal to the integral from 0 to pi over 3. 1 half minus a quarter is a quarter times d theta. Then we have 1 half times the cosine of 2 theta. So that would be plus 1 half times the integral of the cosine of 2 theta, d theta, and again from 0 to pi divided by 3. 
But of course, to integrate the cosine of 2 theta, we need to have a proper differential. We need to have a 2d theta. Since I multiply times 2, I also have to divide by 2. So now I can go ahead and do that integral as well. Now let's go ahead and integrate. So we have the area is equal to uh, 1 quarter times theta evaluated from 0 to pi over 3. And then here we have plus 1 quarter times the cosine of 2 theta integrated becomes the sine of 2 theta. The sine of 2 theta evaluated from 0 to pi over 3. Okay, so now let's come over here and finish it up. So when we plug in the upper limit, we get pi over 3. When we plug in the lower limit, we get 0. So the area is equal to 1 quarter times pi divided by 3 and then plus 1 quarter. When we plug in the upper limit, we get 2 times pi over 3, the sine of that. So we get the sine of 2, let's say 2 pi over 3. That's 120 degrees. And we plug in the lower limit, that would be minus 0. So we don't have to worry about that part. And now we have to simplify this. So the area is equal to pi divided by 12 and plus 1 quarter times the sine of 2 pi over 3, that's 120 degrees, that's the square root of 3 over 2. And so simplify that, you say that the area is equal to pi divided by 12 plus the square root of 3 divided by 8. And that would be the area between the two curves and outside the curve r sub 1, r sub 1 being 1 half. And so that's how we go ahead and find the area between two polar curves like that.